everybody else that may perchance come across this video, we want to talk to you today, uh, Pastor Gary, myself, and Pastor Tim, uh, about this coming Sunday. We are all coming back to church on Sunday. Many of us will be uh, coming back and fellowshipping and having ministry at the church house again. So although it's been quite an adventure for the last nine weeks online, I am so looking forward to getting back to see your faces in public again and, and having some time of ministry and fellowship with you. So we want to just make a quick video to explain the expectations, what it's going to look like Sunday, because it, it's not going to really kind of be service as normal. We want to obviously follow the guidelines that have been set forth for us by our, our government and our officials, our, our governor, even by our own convention, and as well as uh, the personal doctors that I know I've, I've, I've talked with as well about how to make this environment as safe as possible when we come back to fellowship together. So uh, we're going to be uh, sharing what's going on in that regard and talking about the different decisions that have been made. But let me just say, I'm sure there's some of you who say, I was ready to come back four weeks ago as well as those that may be a little too early. Let me just say that uh, those ultimate decisions rest in your lap. You are a priest unto the Lord. You have to make wise decisions about what the Lord would have you do. But to want you to know where we're coming from, we have done a lot of praying and a lot of seeking God's face with multiple meetings between our staff as well as the elders uh, several times. And uh, uh, again, looking at the guidelines that have been given to us for houses of worship from the state of Texas, as well as a lot of other people we talked to. We involve those in our church who are familiar with these kind of needs. One of those individuals is our district chief over at Hazmat Command, Terry Colburn. He's a member of our Magnolia campus as a deacon over there. And, uh, well, you know, he's been quite helpful in this whole process to making sure that when you come back, you're in fully sanitized facilities. Here's a brief word from Gary, excuse me, from Terry Colburn. Hello, church family. My name is Terry Colburn. I'm a member at the Magnolia campus. Many of you know I work for the Houston Fire Department. And one of my jobs over the past eight weeks has been to come up with the disinfecting protocol to ensure the safety of our men and women in response to this COVID crisis. Over the past couple of weeks, I've worked with our pastors to implement some of these same protocols at both of our campuses for the well-being of our church family. So I look forward to seeing all of y'all when we gather again. God bless and peace out. Been praising the Lord for Gary's involvement, and he's been working with us in a particular company, making sure that everything is clean and ready to go. And e even between the services, we go forward from here. So we've always been a clean, healthy church anyway. We certainly want to be even more cautious during this particular time. I want to encourage you to go back and listen to Sunday service this uh, on uh, the 17th, if you haven't listened to it yet, because I talk a little bit about precautions. I talk about the, the ideas that are floating out there today and the real truth about where we are with, the, with this particular crisis. But as far as our church being ready, I really do believe we are. And Pastor Gary and Pastor Tim are going to share a few words with us. So I want to go to Pastor Gary first, kind of tell you what our expectations are when you come back to services. Well, what to expect when you come back to church? What you could expect is we're going to have our greeters at the exterior doors. Have, they're going to have them open as you enter into the main lobby. We encourage you once you're in the main lobby to visit the center table. We will have hand sanitizers ready and available to you for you to use. Now, the wearing of masks and gloves are optional when you come to our service. If you feel comfortable wearing a mask, absolutely. If you don't want to wear a mask, that's your option. This is a, a no judgment zone. So you do what the Lord has led you to do. We will have masks and gloves made available for you to use as well once you're in our uh, in our service. Um, you could pick up a bulletin at the center table as our ushers will not be passing them out. Parents, please be sure to find the children's uh, center. Uh, Pastor Matt and Jenny will be standing by them so that they can hand you the uh Kids packets, activity packets, uh, and Pastor Tim will talk more about that once we talk about what to expect when you go into the service. Uh, also, uh, our sanctuary doors will remain open before, during, and after service, and uh, we will have uh, cry rooms made available for those families that, that need to use that. Finally, I do have some bad news. Unfortunately, we will not have coffee or donuts available for the first couple of weeks uh, as we come back to service. And so with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Tim, who will talk to you about what to expect in the sanctuary. I wasn't uh, ready for that bad news yet, so give me a chance to get over that. That's uh, pretty devastating, but uh, it'll all get better. Amen. So 
Well, praise the Lord. I want to tell you kind of what to expect as you walk into our auditoriums. Uh, at each auditorium, at each campus, uh, we've got made some changes to help with distancing. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the Magnolia campus. Uh, as I talk, you'll be seeing some of the pictures that are uh, on the screen that shows how we've taken out a lot of the rows and made uh, a, a lot of distance in between those rows. It allowed us to make some new sections on the side. So you'll see there's plenty of room to be walking and to be able to stay stay safe and uh, be able to have that distancing that we need. Uh, also at spring, there's been some changes as well. When you come into the auditorium there, uh, we'll show a live shot where you're able to see the signs that's been placed on every other row that says skip row. That allow people to see and see the sign and not be able to sit on that row and sit on the others. And that'll also provide the distancing uh, that we're looking for to keep people safe as well. So we wanted to let you know that as you make your way in and you uh, be able to see those changes. Uh, also, uh, we're asking all the family units, as mentioned before, to sit together uh, uh, to be able to, the children will be sitting with their families. Uh, when you sit down, uh, go ahead and start that little packet with your children, open it up for them, let them be able to start working on that, and they can work on that uh, Bible activity. Uh, as you sit down, we're asking that uh, families uh, have about two seats in between the family units. In other words, the family sits all together, but between one family and another, there'd be about uh, two seats in between. Uh, also, during our welcome of guest time, I know Believers Fellowship loves that time, and our guests love that time. They feel so warm, so receiving when we do that. But right now, we're not going to be able to do that. We'll do what we call the hallelujah wave. Everybody will stay in their seat. We'll wave at each other and uh, just say hallelujah, and people will know that we're welcoming that way. Uh, we won't have our hospitality areas uh, for our guests to come to afterward. They'll drop their welcome cards in the offering boxes on their way out. But still, as you see our guests, uh, uh, you can welcome them and tell them how glad you are to have them with us. And of course, we'll be following back up on our guests as we always do so that they know that they are warm and received and welcome. Uh, also during the invitation time, altar call time, uh, we'll still have that where people will feel free to come up to the altar and pray and do business between them and the Lord. However, we will not have the counselors that will be up front during this time, uh, but we'll still make that altar time available. Also during the dismissal, uh, when we dismiss everyone, we'll be dismissing half the congregation at one time and then half the congregation at the other time as we split that up so that we're less crowded going out the doors. We also would ask that when you go out into the lobby that you go ahead and make your way from the auditorium outside. If you feel like you want to fellowship, then we would ask you to do that uh, outside where you can still practice the social distancing and be able to minister uh, one to another. God bless you. It was good speaking to you today. Amen. As, as we've stated, it'll be a family-style worship. Families will sit together. We won't have a nursery or children's church. That's why we've made the cry rooms available. If something comes up, we have to take a child out. We'll have those marked well, so you'll know exactly. There'll be the nurseries and toddler areas that we've used in the past at both locations. Those will be available to you. We're not going to have the uh, the Nazis out telling us where we can't breathe or where we can't breathe. Just, you know, be courteous to one another and... Uh, uh, realize that some people have different opinions or convictions about these than others do. So we'll just all go with the flow. It's not going to be like this for a long time. I really believe these restrictions are going to be lessened and lessened more and more in the weeks that are ahead. But for the next couple of weeks, this is obviously the way we're going to, to move forward. Uh, I do want to make it very cl crystal clear that if you're what uh, is known as a net risk population, that you uh, really pray about should you be here these first couple of services or not. Again, it's your decision of what you, you decide to do and between you and the Lord. But I would strongly encourage you that if you do have some underlying health issues, that you use discretion with that. Uh, if you want to know what that means, uh, the at-risk population, I have in my hand here the state of Texas health protocols and their suggestions that they give us. And they said the at-risk population are those who are 65 and older, and they list those people with these type of conditions, and here's the conditions that they mention for those that are 65 and older, those with chronic lung disease, moderate to severe asthma, chronic heart disease, severe obesity, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, undergoing dialysis, 
liver disease, or weakened immune system. We know that 98% of the people who contract COVID will overcome it. It won't be a problem. But those with those kind of conditions are the ones that have the most serious conditions. Ultimately, many have died because of it. So uh, use, use, use your wisdom, precaution. But even if uh, you come, you know, distance yourself, respect. On accordingly to what you know would be a good health decision for yourself. I've really, and all of us have, really sought to seek God's will and, on, and direction and have discernment in all these decisions that we're making. Uh, we hadn't just made them independently, not only from the staff, each other working together, working together with other people in our church and talking with elders and, and even health professionals, safety professionals like Chief Colburn. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion. We've met multiple times with pastors in the spring area, pastors in the Magnolia area, multiple conference calls, uh, kind of deciding as a group of churches, evangelical believers of kind of coming up with a consensus. Most of us decided, I would say probably 85% decided this Sunday, the 24th, would be our launch Sunday. There was a few that started a week or two earlier, but Again, this is this is every church is autonomous. We do as the Lord leads us as a church to do it. And this is the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It's unique that it's lined up with so many other churches and pastors as well. So, you know, one thing that's really come out of this is a great relationship with our neighboring churches and neighboring pastors. It's been r- really a blessing. Another source of information I sought to was some doctors that I know. One was a, a doctor that many are familiar with, if you've been a member for a long time at Believers Fellowship, one who's spoken at our church many times over the years, done men's conferences for us, covered for me in pulpit supply, early days of our church. It was Dr. James Holly. He is the CEO and the founder of SETMA, that's Southeast Texas Medical Association. He is also an adjunct professor of family and community medicine, uh, medicine at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. Well-respected physician, a doctor of many years, only just recently retired. I asked him, I said, you know, would you have a problem coming back to church at your age. He's 70 plus years old and uh, he's in decently good health. He said, no, I wouldn't have a problem at all. He said, especially with the conditions that you're, you laid out here. I said, well, why don't you make me a list of some things that you think would be a priority list that a church ought to do. And he gave me a list of 10 things. Obviously, number one was if you're sick, if you have a fever, if you're coughing, sneezing, uh, showing signs of illness, please stay home. And we would say that anyway to everyone on any Sunday. Number two, he said, as you enter the building, everyone should stop at the hand sanitizers. And we have these uh, uh, self-pumping hand sanitizers. You just put your hand under and it is sanitized, or you can bring your own. His third suggestion was says, uh, the touching and the hugging, handshaking for now, uh, the kissing, other physical contacts, refrain from at this time. Uh, four family members sit together with seats in between them. And we're, we're stationing two to three seats in between each, each family setting and each group setting. He says, uh, number five really didn't apply to us, but don't use hymn books. Uh, Well, it's not a problem for our church. We don't use hymn books anyway. We sing off the wall. Number six, when a family goes home. So when you leave the service and you head back home, so the first thing you ought to do is is change your clothes and uh, wash your hands with soapy water. And he recommended doing that regularly anyway. He says, remember, this is a virus that is a single strand of RNA, which is coated with lipid or with fat. Fat is dissolved by warm, soapy water, and it kills the virus. Said so. That's that's really a good suggestion. When you get home, change clothes and you know well, wash hands. Number seven, uh, we don't want to be passing collection pay, plates or you know uh, papers up and down the pews. And again, the bulletins, those kind of things will be out for you just to pick up as you come in. Number eight, when you talk to others, if you're going to be doing face to face conversations, put some distance between yourself. That's six feet. You know, he says uh, the CDC recommends six feet. He said four feet usually adequate, but you know, get some distance there. Number nine, he said. If you are not coughing and you're not touching and you're not sneezing, someone stand, standing next to someone, you're not going to infect them and they're not going to infect you. Number 10, which I thought was excellent. And I mentioned it in Sunday's sermon, which I encourage you again, go back and listen to if you haven't yet. The principle is this. I would rather die young doing the right thing than to live to be 100 doing the wrong thing. Well, I thought that was certainly good advice in virus or no virus, amen? But we just want you to know that, uh, that we're not doing this uh, without a lot of preparation, a lot of prayer, and a lot of faith. And so I'm going to be there Sunday. These guys are going to be there Sunday. Come in with our families. We're going to be excited. Sit with our families. Have a great and glorious time. We'll distance for a few weeks. We'll be all right. We can survive it and respect each other. If you're not here, pray for us. Watch the live service. Be a part of it that way. And when you're online, let them know. Let us know you're there. I mean, comment. Put your name in. Tell us you're praying. If nothing else, say amen. 
And obviously, we want everybody that tags online to share. I'll probably get online as soon as I get here anyway when the service starts and do a share anyway, even though I'm in the live service, because we want as many people as possible. We have a message to share. We love God. We love people. And we're out to reach the world. So do that with us, and we'll see you Sunday. If we don't see you here, we'll see you online. God bless you, and thank you for this time. Amen? God bless you guys.